So you're a glutton for punishment. Welcome back. Um, we could actually make this a little bit better even. So we've already done the thing um, to where we want to delay for some length of time and then check. Originally we put that inside the interrupt. That's definitely bad, like to delay inside your interrupt. Um, then we moved it to where it happens inside the main while loop, um, which that's actually okay. You can block that. That's not so bad. But there's no reason to. There's no reason to like just block the world for 30 milliseconds. Um, we could actually do even one step better, and that is to instead of using a delay function, uh, to instead use a timer interrupt, right? So what I want to do is um, instead of doing all this stuff um, inside here with delays, um, I want to be able to get rid of these delay functions um, and use instead an interrupt. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm actually going to comment out everything in there, but not just yet. So if we want to use a timer interrupt, we better set up the timer. First thing we need to do if we want to use timers is to include timers.h. And then I'm going to use some timer. Uh, just because it never gets much use, I'm going to use timer 3. So I'm going to say open timer 3. Um, I'm actually going to use a prescaler of just 1 to 1. So that's essentially like no prescaler. So he's set up and ready to go. Uh, you can see that initially his interrupts are off. So he's he might be counting, but interrupts are off so that nothing's going to get called. We probably should decide if he is high or low. You know, technically we should do that. Um, it'll obviously work um, if we just let it default. But let's go ahead and let's say that he is um, high priority. So we will set his priority to high. And let's go write his um, interrupt. Even though it's currently off, we know that eventually there's going to be times when we turn it on, right? So if there is an interrupt from him, we need to figure out what the name of his flag is. So his flag is called um, this guy here. The bit name is always quite readable, even if uh, even if the special function register is kind of gibberish. P I R two is where he lives, and of course we'll reset his flag. So what we would like to do here is instead of setting a flag and handling it in main. What we're going to do is we're going to write the timer. Um, so I'll just make a variable called, I don't know, debounce start. And what we can do is we can say um, turn on interrupts at this point. It's going to make a lot of sense once it all comes together. So um, if we get a push button, um, what we really want to happen is we want to be just called back. So call some code after 30 milliseconds or 40 milliseconds. Um, and so call this code um, using the timer interrupt. So I've got to declare start uh, debounce start. Uh, debounce start is where you need to start the clock to get a total of 30 milliseconds, which would be 35,536. So, you know, it's 2 to the 16th minus 30,000, because 30,000 is how many timer ticks, with a 1 to 1 prescaler, how many timer ticks there are in 30 milliseconds. But actually, since it's non-blocking anyway, I'm going to time delay for, for 40 milliseconds, right? Um, because it's not going to be blocking anyway, uh, so I'm just going to delay for an additional 10 milliseconds uh, just to be really sure I'm debounced. So what I'm going to do is inside each ISR, so if if you you know were a zero interrupt, um, you set that little flag in main events, um, and then each time you're going to start the timer at a certain spot and say, hey, call that function at this time. And then what we're going to do is that code that used to be in main uh, that had the delays in it, we're actually going to move it all. 
So I'm just going to do a control X here. And we're going to do it um, within, within this timer interrupt, right? And the nice thing is, is that we can just blow away these lines that had delays. Because by the time this function is called, the delay has already happened, right? Another thing we're going to do, now this is super sneaky, is we're going to say, turn off these interrupts. So kind of do it once, right? So turn them on um, and then call that interrupt in this long. And then as soon as you call that interrupt, uh, reset the flag, that's normal. Um, and then we go so far as to say, oh, and by the way, when this rolls over next time, don't call the interrupt because it's already kind of handled. Um, and so it's a one-shot uh, interrupt, right? So it's kind of a one-shot thing. So this is very elegant um, in that it never blocks, right? So there's never a 40 millisecond block. Um, it won't look any different. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, you can see that they uh, should all work. Um, oops, looks like I did goof somewhere. Um, but at any rate, it's a very, very elegant way to wait that 30 milliseconds or 40 milliseconds in this case and never block the main thread at all uh, as you do it. All right, just because just I wanted to teach you, that's a little bit about how you make non-blocking delays. All right, Whew. see you next time. Bye. Thank you.